Game of Thrones is done. Lord of the Rings doesn't work at all. So why don't we head over to uh, Series 3, I guess. Elder Kings. Definitely Series 3. I don't care what anybody says. I've never heard of a slowed in my life. So what's the plan for this one? Well... Everybody's pointed out that we've only ever really played as um, an elf that becomes god, which is fair enough. I think that's kind of a fun playthrough. So this time, we're just going to play as a man. We're just going to play as an old man with a little bit of political intrigue. We're not not specifically an old man, but, but one with political intrigue. We'll try and manipulate the Elder Council, try and work our way up from the boring tier of Count, or as it's called in CK, or, or in the Elder King specifically, Baron, which is very confusing. Anyway, I found a start. Which is semi-random, and I think that'd be kind of interesting. And we're not gonna we're not gonna make an OP character. We'll rename the dynasty and that type of thing. We're not gonna make an OP character. We're just gonna dive in and see how we get on. We'll go for some weird matrilineal stuff to try and see if we can breed in dragon blood or get one of the dragon bloodlines into our family, because we're just basically gonna be playing as an absolute no one. So we're going to be playing in 3497, it's when Cyrodiil is at its height, it's when the Empire is at its strongest. This is around, uh, what is that, like seven years roughly before Molag Bal and Manny Marco, King of Worms, try and take things over with uh, the Empress who follows this current Emperor we've got now. So when this guy dies, the cult of Molag Bal basically take control, and then that all kicks off. So we've got a little bit of period of peace and prosperity, and the Empire, like I said, is at its height. So we can do a lot more political gaming, and you know, there is that whole system that that they've added with the actual Elder Council that I've never really checked out before that I think would be awesome to have a look at. I would love to become Dragonborn because I don't think we've ever played the Elder Kings as a Dragonborn. In our first series, was it our character's son became Dragonborn, but then I stopped playing before we actually started playing as him because it wasn't really about that character. So it would be kind of cool to check that out. Now, it's very, very difficult to actually just become Dragonborn. You can't really, you know, influence it at all outside of trying to breed in Dragon Blood or one of the bloodlines into your house outside of that, and it's an incredibly low chance. Slightly higher if you're in prison, slightly higher for the player, slightly higher for, like, Nords, and then, you know, slightly reduced again if you're, if you're Imperial, slightly reduced even more if you're an Elf. So, we are... It, I think it would be very rare. It'd be very difficult to become Dragonborn. If people are up for it, let me know, and I might tweak the file a little bit just to give us a slightly higher chance, but you could literally play for hundreds of years and never actually once ever be able to play as a Dragonborn, even if you try and set it up specifically to do that. So we are going to start playing as the... Well, I was going to say the Count, but actually he's the Baron of um, a, a random sort of couple of provinces here, both part of separate duchies. The Duchy of Sinia, would you say that? And then the Duchy of Chadenhall as well. We're very low born, probably one of the lowest alone. There are actually very few counts, if you wanna if you wanna look at it like that. In the Empire right now, a lot of it is is duchies, and there are a lot of quite powerful kingdoms. As you can see there, you've got Skingrad, you've got Nibane. There are, you know, Duchy of Bruma, San Crator, etc., etc. So there are very few small-time counts. So we're playing as one of the weakest characters here. This character also has no history to find for him, so he is semi-randomized. I've, I've sort of loaded him to a couple of times to sort of see what we'd end up. One time he was a Master Mage, one time he was a crappy entry character. This time, we're a pretty decent steward, which I think is going to be pretty essential for starting this early game here. Nice. What have we got then? We are an experienced magistrate. We are unyielding, nibbed and the lady, slovenly, wroth, humble, and just actually not too terrible. Now this has got to change, huh? House Valentian. We, we descend from Count Nepos. Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? That's insane. Are we going to be House Julius? House Julius Dickus Biggus? I think this is, I think this is fate. This is actually the greatest family crest I've ever come up with. Just a mountain of gold bars. I know they're supposed to be bricks, but I think the gold bars look a lot cooler. Um, especially as we're going to build this dynasty up. The oh, whole that looks perfect. As we're going to build this dynasty up with a guy who's starting off with decent stewardship. This is fantastic. Counts, our, our loyal and noble house was founded by the Duke of Sundercliffe, Nepos Dickus Biggus Julius himself. That is, that is a fate. That that is incredibly lucky to have a character that we can tie together so nicely like that. Now, as you can see here, I do have some sub mods enabled as well. This sub mod is fantastic, by the way. I will put a link to this one in the description. I've forgotten the mod maker's name. I made a note of it, and now I actually can't remember off the top of my head. But there is a mod available on the forums right now that you can see adds models to the map, 3D models. So it isn't just uh, the Imperial City, and they look fantastic, which is exactly why I'm going for them here. The only other mod I've actually seen add custom models is the... Uh, the World of Warcraft one, I forget what that's called off the top of my head. But these are really nicely detailed and it's got some really cool ones as well. So not only is there the Imperial City, there's the Tower over in Alanor, if I can spot it. There you go, the Crystal Tower. We've got the Adamantium Tower over in Daggerfall, which is just there as well. I mean, that looks incredible. You've got things like the City of Vivek, 
which is really, really awesome. Oh, shit, they've even got the little rock floating above Vivek City. That's really cool. Anyway, this is an awesome little mod. I've got a couple of other sub mods as well kicking around here. Links to all of those will be in the description, of course, and the full mod pack that I've got going on today. So, the goal then, we're going to do a bit, bit, of, bit of political maneuvering. Lots of people are pointing out that we've done a lot of, you know, very mage-heavy playthroughs, and I personally don't do much intrigue or things along those lines, or, or, you know, sort of scumming our way through it. Clever marriages. So that's what we're going to do. We're trying. We're, we're going to try and be a, a proper scheming little Elder Council member. I think that'd be kind of cool. So... I mean, ideally, we want to get on the Elder Council. We're not actually on that one yet. Who is part of it? There are a lot of people on the Elder Council, huh? Jesus. Um, all the, obviously, Dukes, Kings, that type of thing. Currently, it is led by King Abner, the High Chancellor. Not Okato this time, unfortunately. King of Nivene. Heir to the High Lordship of Pophead. Fantastic. 159? Oh, he's immortal. Oh, it's Abner Thun. Right, got it. Okay. Um, don't worry too much about him. I'm sure he definitely won't cause us any trouble. Blood of Vilius. Wow. House Thun, an ancient and noble family. So it's actually his sister, I believe, that is... She becomes the next emperor, right? And then she's the one that worships Mo like Bal or, or something along those lines. It's one of the Thans, either way. So uh, keep a close eye on him. He's also our liege, our immediate liege. So we should probably be a little careful around that guy. Anyway, um, Outer Council is obviously available to us. I think we should probably join like the Mercantile Guild, even the Greybeards. Oh, that'd be interesting. I don't think I've ever done the Greybeards before. All the cult, the Ancestor Moths, to learn how to read an Elder Scroll. Uh, what does that actually do for us? Exarch gives us monthly prestige. Same religious opinion is actually very, very nice if you want to rule kind of a larger realm there. Um, and is that all that does? Just religious opinion, prestige, and favor? Don't get me wrong. It's pretty decent. I imagine there are some unique events around that one too. I assume Greybeards will allow us to learn the Thun, but I imagine it takes many, many, many years before you actually get any payoff from that one. Again, I've not ever done either of these two societies. Mercantile Guild is just, you know, Mercantile Guild, lower city build cost, lower city build time, that type of thing. All right, that's good to consider. Ultimate goal, getting on the Outer Council, being the High Chancellor, manipulating our way through the Empire. If we could put our dynasty, the the greatest dynasty, Dicker's biggest Julius, onto the, uh, onto the Imperial Throne, that'd be fantastic. So who is the Emperor right now, then? Varin Aquilarios, a Colovian man, eight divines. He has... Oh, they've got the great works. Wow, that's really, really cool. I'm actually really impressed there. Imperial City, look at that. Enables the recruitment of gladiators. Uh, we've got Revolt Risk lowered. Man, this is insane. Cruel Arbitrary of Ruthless Characters may have, their, may have the condemned fight to the death in the arena. Wow. We've got Temple of the One there, Imperial Arena, the Arbitor Ar Arbitorium, Arboretum. Wow, cool. And then he's also got a bloodline, which is the blood of Varen. So actually he himself there. Proud son of Coral before becoming emperor of the Empire of Cyrodiil when he overthrew Leovic. The last of the so-called Longhouse Emperors. Wow, okay, cool then. And he's not Dragonborn or anything. He just happens to be the, the emperor right now. So he can't light the dragonflies. On the subject of that, I've noticed that they've added a news tab. Which actually allows you to check on the current events within the uh, with it within Cyrodiil, essentially. They might have had this before, but obviously we've not really played as an Imperial in the Empire. So we got things like... Status of the Elder Council. Currently has 500 in its treasury. Its annual income is zero. The Ruby Throne currently has zero influence. That's probably because we've only just started playing. If we let that untick and actually go for a couple of months, we'd probably see some uh, some differences in that regard. Cool. Council out the following policies. Uh, you've got like quest funding, admittance, join requirements. Skilled and influential may join the Elder Council. Well, that's going to be us eventually. The Empire exists. Thank you. How very meta. Status of the Dragonborn. There is no Dragonborn known to be alive. That's interesting. Status of the Dragonflies. They are not burning, of course, because we don't actually have a Dragonblood Emperor sat on the throne right now. No one knows where the Emil of Kings are. We do. I mean, I mean, we as the player do, but everyone else doesn't. Ongoing Dietrich Invasion. There are obviously none, but that will might actually be scripted to sort of as a, as a guarantee thing to occur in the next sort of 10 years or so. So we might have to fight Molag Bal. I've not really considered that, that we're going to be a, a Baron sort of caught up in that mess. But if we just keep our head down and keep ourselves to ourselves, we might not get swept up in the whole thing. And then Necromancy is also banned by the Mages Guild. Nice. Okay. Um, and then Imperial Bureaucratic Policies. What are these then? Um, we'll never know because it's gone forever. Is it going to fire an event? Nope, it's gone. Okay, let's not worry about it. Oh, there we go. Um, what Bureaucratic Policy, policy shall I enact? Um, oh, I've seen this one before. Yeah, go home. This meeting's over. We don't want to kick off any of those yet. That's if you want to sort of specialize in a particular area. So we won't worry about that for the time being. All right. Select a patron deity is probably the best start here. So I think... I do like the idea of buffing up our stewardship as much as possible, proving ourselves as someone who is very capable to King Abner, uh, showing off that we that we are a useful vassal and are definitely deserving of a duchy level title, if you wouldn't mind, my friend. We could go for... What does Akatosh give? 
Uh, prestige, character favor, divine opinion, nine divine opinion, same faith opinion, plus ten. So you get plus thirteen opinion with everyone else of our religion. That's pretty insane. Okay, cool. Follower of RK gives health. Oh man, the health bonuses. Man, the gods bonuses are very good, aren't they? Debella plus ten, and then that's another plus thirteen essentially. Plus you get some favor from that one and attraction opinion. Debella actually might not be too bad there. Julianos gives learning. Kinnereth gives intrigue. Mara gives fertility. Along with Green Pat Spin and Oriel, because they are that's also an, an, one of the Elven Pantheon gods as well. Stendar, same thing, and then Zenithar gives stewardship. Mm, that's tempting. But I would also like the plus 13 opinion with absolutely everyone, so I think that's super, super OP. I mean, there's one way to get your leech to like you, and if that's by. Oh, we can worship Shazar. That's cool. Um, personal combat skill plus four. Bretons and Oriel don't like us because they're obviously. Bretons are Elven influence, and then Oriel are obviously Elves. Um, Shazar is, I don't really know too much about the actual gods themselves, but that's the, that's the, essentially the worst part, that they believe, men believe that, that Shazar was, was a good guy. Um, is that Shazar and Lorcan the same thing? I never remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. We're gonna worship whatever the one gave us a general opinion. Yeah, Debella. Nice. Excellent. That's one way to get our leech like. It's been out plus one with him, so that's something, I guess. What is that? Follow of Debella plus three. Humble plus three. Follow of, yeah, okay, that's fantastic. So we are, of course, playing with the advanced vanilla congenital traits mod because I really do like that one quite a lot here. And it, it fits quite nicely as well. I think I think there's a strong argument for someone like, you know, Tiber Septim being a prodigy or something along those lines. So we've got uh, Bodil Prior of uh, Jalenheim. It's a strong character, so that could work out quite well for us. We might as well start the breeding program early. There are no prodigies or genius characters available, unfortunately. Um, we also lose no prestige from her. So yeah, absolutely, I'll take that one. Thank you very much. So we'll start we'll start the breeding program early on because we are gonna have to play tall for quite some time here. Um, prestige or gold? I'll take the ten gold, even though it's not really worth a huge amount. Let's go for. I mean, acquire a title. Yeah, I mean, I would I would kind of like that one a lot. Become a counselor could also work quite well for our ambitions. Ten and artifacts. We could just ask someone to steal one for us. We can employ the thieves guild. Um, let's go for acquire a title then. Early on, we'll stop. Oh my god, we've got a duke now. We've put under. Count Naspos II of Skinnia. What was what was our our house founded with? What what was our original duchy level title? Sundercliff. Oh my god, that's miles away. So we sort of migrated our way across Cyrodiil here, huh? Be kind of nice to get that one back, wouldn't it? Our sort of original starting duchy. But I guess our immediate goal then is to go for uh, the duchy of Sinia, seeing as we are half part of that. We've also got this one, so we might come under attack from Chadenhall, although is Chadenhall our liege? He is. Okay, alright, that's fair enough then. Cool. Um, I think then, to start off with, we will go for family, and this time around we're going to focus on our, our dynasty. I think we've never once built a powerful dynasty in, well, or never really had much of a dynasty focus, I should say, throughout any of the, the CK2 campaigns that we've done. Oh, what is this? Wow. I've been presumed dead for over a decade. Princess Oren has returned to Alinor upon the death of her father and become the High Queen of Somerset. Oh, alright. Aaron has grown into an impressive individual, competent and skilled. Okay. Um, all hail the High Queen. At which point, she approves of us. Okay. Oh, no. We approve of her. She is very good. Wow. Uh, 22 and everything. What, what is that one? Sets pure. Master Battle Sword. Agile. Quick. The Lord. Altmer. What artifacts have she got kicking around? A nice horse. Um, you know what? Fine, then. Leads from the rear. Legendary Magistrate is fantastic. What? I mean, why are we... Why, why do we even care about this? Sure, we approve of this new queen of the Somerset Isles. Very weird. Success and nomination. So what is our... So that's Sinia. Absolute cognatic confirmation. So we vote for... Hmm. The current rule of their spouse or consorts. Right, so that must be a spouse. I was going to say, why the hell can she inherit? Okay, so we can vote for the guy... Our, our liege's son or his wife. Um, I guess we'll just vote for the son because he is the least skilled of the two of them. More likely to... Maybe be able to incite rebellion on or something like that. Now, what about our own realm for the time being? Absolute cognatic Gavilkan. Our daughter. We have a daughter? Um, she's okay, actually. Claudia, bigger stick with Julius, isn't too terrible. I think we would like to get, you know, strong son, something like that, just to start off with here. I don't know what the gender laws are like in, in Tamriel at this stage, to be completely honest with you. We are just absolute cognatic. Oh, fair enough then. So, so actually, it makes no difference even if we have a son, because she'll still be first. Ah, and there we go, right on cue, we've already started picking up a little bit of power here. To the Great Baron Aurelio, it's a fine day with you around. It's a fine day with you around. I would like to give you a seat on my council, therefore offer you the title of Mar Marshal. <laughs> Marshal. 16 stewardship to a marshal. You know what? You'd make a mighty fine command. Thank you, my friend, I appreciate that one. Look upon the Marshal of Sinia there. With our fucking good god, we need Ring Ring. 
We need to get ourselves a ring around here to come and, to come and uh, teach us, you know, the ways of the, the mighty folded Nippon Steel. Special minor titles grantable. Oh, Lord. Uh, that seems to be working as intended. Give me a second. Okay, that's a little better. Right, Master of the Horse, welcome aboard my wife. Oh, God, I don't want to think about the implications of that. Faragus will go for Cadiceus. Oh, these names are so good, aren't they? Much better than garbage Dwemer names like Rakungthunch. We've got some strong Roman, definitely not Roman names, definitely Imperial names. Doesn't it, Regent Claudia? All right, there we go. So I think we better just join any old society because it's going to be a long time before I think the Outer Council will let us on board here. Should we go for the Greybeards? I mean, if we're expected to fight as, as is Marshall... I think, well, uh, to be fair, the Outer Kings mod does change it so that you can't give commander titles to councillors. Because, of course, if you've got a councillor set to work, they can't lead armies. So it's kind of a nice change there. Um, Greybeards, I think we'll join. If he wants us to be a marshal, we're going to be a goddamn good marshal. Joining the Greybeards is no simple task. This, the, the only means to join their order is to visit High Rothgar, which can only be done by climbing the 7,000 steps. Well, and they're like only 200 or like 130 or something like that. I'm off to High Rothgar. Let's go. We haven't really got much else to do right now. The realm is basically going to run itself. And by realm, I mean our two provinces, our two farms are going to run themselves. So really, there's no reason. I couldn't even find our capital then. There's no real reason for us to kick around, is there? So Draclo is our capital. Are there trade points? There are, but none that affect us at all. Okay, not much of a big deal. In that case, I guess we'll just start building up our... Oh, plenty of buildings. That's what I like to see. Now, what about a government type? Are we allowed to hold city? Yes, we are. Castle, Fort, Shrine, Academy, and City. Right, we can hold everything then. So I actually think the first thing we want to do is probably save up and build a city in Draclo as soon as possible. Because we could be here for quite some time. Uh, 532 gold, but it does take the best part of sort of four years there. Jesus. Okay, um, that's not a big deal. That's, that's not a big deal at all. That, that's fine by me. So we could get our council to oversee it, things like that. What's our council looking like right now? Um, actually pretty decent. You know, to say that we're a, a very small count slash baron in, in Elder Kings... We've actually got quite a nice council set up here. Um, my wife is pregnant. Hey, that's good news. Right, so you start collecting taxes. You can start studying technology. I mean, man, we're doing pretty well. Let's send you over to Anvil then for the timing. Anvil is separate from the uh, from the Empire at this, this start date. Um, Prosthetize, research, cultural tech, perform charity. Um, none of these are particularly useful. I think I'm just going to hunt apostates so we can start building up our, our piety a little bit. We could go and improve Diplo relations specifically with our with our liege or with our liege's leader or even with the emperor if we want. Let's get you... I mean, do we really need to train troops right now? We're so stable and we're not going to come under attack. I mean, probably ever, to be honest with you. Um, research military tech. I don't normally do it, but we, there's 1.2% chance yearly of finding out something. 3.55% uh, chance yearly of also discovering something. We could train our troops. We could organize the army. Ah, doesn't really matter. Let's, let's train some troops. You know what? I am going to research military tech. Very, very small chance of permanently gaining something out of it. So I think that is the best play for the time being. After a few days traveling on a small carriage with your pilgrim entourage, you finally arrive at Iverstead. As you look for High Hrothgar, you are humbled and realize how accurate the nickname Throat of the World is. Onwards. Dear father, it's a fine day with you around. I've been appointed as your regent. Look at the muscles on you. Thank you, my daughter. After a small trip, you reach the first emblem. Before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all of Mundus. Their word was the voice, and they spoke for only true needs. Thank you. Um, we're not, we're not going to read all of those, because, of course, there are shit ton of them. Ah, now this is something I didn't take into account. The journey to Irothgar is, is super, super dangerous. So we might just end up being killed by wolves, or a big troll, or bandits, or something like that. As you climb the steps, you notice several grey shapes darting through the... Ah, shit, wolves. Um, okay. This option is available because of a qualifying attribute attribute score or personal trait. This option will always succeed. Um, probably because we're wrath, I guess. Sure, scare the wolves away. We're not taking any risks this time around. Piss off, wolf. You open your arms, stretching them as far as you can, making an awful commotion. Onwards, good work. I remember doing that in Skyrim. After climbing more steps, you see the second emblem. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons were... Pres yeah, okay, I will continue my pilgrimage. Thank you. Ah, shit. Continuing along, you come across a camp of people armed to the teeth. I'll mount your head on my wall. The other option checks your personal combat of 29. Ooh, um, shit, okay. Is there any way we can instantly get a weapon or a sword or anything that might help us out here? Can we visit the marketplace and buy, oh god, um, open ruler decisions? What have we got here? I express council interest. I mean, I would love to do that, but we need to be prestige. We need, oh cool, so that's how we would do it. Right, interesting. Right, we'll keep a close eye on that one then. Um, excuse me, you, you got any more of them swords? Could we maybe steal a sword very briefly from someone? 
Uh, right, let's see what we can dig up. Artifact. Who has a sword that I could borrow forever? Elder Council Amulet? Not really interested. Steel sword, you'll do. Um, plot to steal artifact. Oh, that's a nice plot to have. No, we, we actually can't because I imagine we're away from Court Traveling so we can't hire the Thieves Guild. Shit, we're going to die, aren't we? Oh, good. Okay, the fighting skills aren't enough to keep them alive against you. My god, how did he manage that with his 29 personal combat and unarmed? What a, what a warrior. Now I see why you were made marshal. You come to a break in the pathway. A huge roar. A vicious snow bear. I fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. Please don't die. Oh, good. Oh, shit. Okay. We managed to kill a bear with our bare hands. Again, now I'm starting to understand why this guy has been made marshal. Shit. Blizzard. We should be fine. We've killed a bear. We're dead. We have died to weather. A bear couldn't stop us, bandits couldn't stop us, but a cold breeze, brrr, terrible. Baron Aurelio has ascended to heaven at the age of 46. He died in an accident, although not especially breast, we are playing as Baroness Claudia of Draclo. So be it. Okay then, shit. I died while I was serving Count Nasbos II, Count Nasbos II. I hope he will continue to honour my last wish and bury me properly. Okay, keeps his promise to bury us, thank you, I appreciate that one. Um... Well, now we're playing as a marshal woman. Uh, she wants to offer us a marshal. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think we're actually way more qualified than our late father, so I appreciate that one a lot. Good God. This is not going to be easy, is it? Turns out not starting as a ridiculously OP mage can uh, put a little bit of challenge into the game. So, now we've got a different tactic, and that tactic isn't marrying for, for you know, traits like strong or prodigy or genius or anything else. we got bloodlines on the mind now, because we are a lady, and ladies can breed in bloodlines very, very easy. So let's open our ledger here. Let's see what bloodlines we can dig up. Um, what is that like? It's quite... L oh, there it is. Okay. Bloodlines. We are looking for any blood, living blood, of Emperor Remen Cyrodiil. So that will give us... Maybe, I, I don't know if that allows us to uh, light the dragon fires, does it? Um, but who the fuck are you, Vilius? Get out of here, villainous I don't know who you are. Right, let's try that one again. Um, right, we're looking for Remen Cyrodiil instead. There he is. Okay, cool. Right, and then we click that one. And then let's see if there are any unmarried men we could potentially snatch up here. Brutal Pass is betrothed. Shit. Um, what about you? You're also... Oh, God, this is going to be difficult to find, isn't it? Uh, we've got a seven-year-old boy... Now, they are definitely, definitely not going to accept a matrilineal marriage. He's 38. Interesting. Um, arranged marriage between... No, apparently not. Why not? Uh, he's our spy master. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that could be a lot more difficult than I was sort of anticipating here. Oh, he's got some pretty decent bloodlines, huh? Remen Cerebral and... Who is that? Biafred? I don't know who you are. Um, the Skelramora, traditional and ancient Nordic clans, founders of Falkreath. Oh, right, there we go. Right, okay. Um, let me hunt down a decent bloodline. I'll see if I can find someone for us to marry. Oh, that works. Proposed that Baroness Claudia and Horik get married. So Horik is just what looks like a random Nordman, but he does have the blood of the companions. March plus one, at more on opinion plus five. We might as well try and collect as many of these as we can, huh? Better than nobody. Is that man, is there actually anyone slightly better? Horik, you're on my you're on my shortlist right now. Let's might you a special interest. Uh okay, so what else we got? Um is there anyone with slightly better stats, maybe even an inheritable trait? Doesn't look like it. Especially none that would be willing to come to our court so easy. What about what about you, for example? Um, pretty decent. Not fantastic, though. Um, same bloodline, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, let's go with him, then. Let's, let's go with Horik for the timing, because this guy's also 41. Horik, welcome to court. Let's arrange marriage, matrilineal. Us to him. We gain 27 prestige as well, because he is a highborn with that blood of the companions. All right, well, this is uh, this is an okay start, I think. And then every generation, if we can do that, if we can get, like, a, a, a girl as our heir, and then just keep marrying all these bloodlines. I've never really done that in CK2, so this is uh, this is something new for me to try out as well. Right, let's set the council again, for the love of God. All right, there we go. Our husband is apparently now our marshal, too. Has he at least got more than two marshal this time, fingers crossed? We can compose a book. Yeah, let's do that. It's complexity of war or family history. Um, we'll go for the complexity of war for the time being, because that might be useful if we want to go to war with our fellow vassals, try and grab ourselves a little bit of land. Um, business focus, maybe debase the mints. I don't remember how it works in the Outer Scrolls. Um, Outer King, sorry. I think, just remember in the Raccoon Punch campaign, it was super, super OP for a time, wasn't it? We were getting it fired every 30 seconds. We might have just got lucky with that character, but, uh, it seems like they haven't adjusted it too far from the base game. What else have we got here? Um, build a war chest. Groom and air. Groom and air it's got to be. Fertility by the 20%. Thank you very much. And let's also join a society. Do we dare... Oh my god, we've got the Dark Brotherhood of the Morag Tong also available to us. Um, do we dare try and join the freaking Greybeards again? 
if we go up high Hrothgar and get killed by a freaking strong breeze, I'm, well, it's going to be a game over. So let's go for... I join the Fighters Guild. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's do that. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah, let's not join the Greybeards because that could be dangerous and we could die. So instead, we'll join the freaking Fighters Guild. Absolutely big brain play. Oh, nice. Okay, your steward comes to you one afternoon. I was about to say, I don't really know how rapidly we're going to be able to start things off here. I'll start looking at uh, sort of adjacent claims on our, our promises that have claims adjacent to us that we can sort of check out here and maybe go to war over. We've got a decent amount of martial on our side, which means we do have 1,200 troops there. That's quite nice. To say that we've only got two provinces, that's that's not a terrible amount. Um, can we can we randomly just declare war? Um, I assume we need Cassus Belli. Yeah, okay then. So we could start fabricating claims, and in fact, that might be necessary. 6% chance yearly. Um, and, and what sort of are we looking at in terms of troop count? Yeah, I mean, like I said, to say that we've only got two promises there, Countess Septima has 1,600 men, and she's fully reinforced. So if we get lucky with our levy reinforcement rate, or with our marshal, or something like that, we could potentially grab ourselves some decent land here. This guy's only got six... Yeah, okay. I think we'll try and become the Duke of Cropsford. I think that's a great idea. Um, and what's this one part of Chadenhall? Okay, let's ignore that one then. Uh, sure. Start fabricating some claims. Let's, let's head south and see if we can get to the river at least. I don't know if we can raid, can we? There might be a bloodline that allows us to raid. We can. Rulers can raid in for our neighbors for loot. Ah, oh, sweet. Let's get to the coastline and then just go and head out to Akavir. The time has come to outfit a ship for our trading expedition. The Harbour Master shows you a large ship with a sizable cargo hold. Um, uh, this could be good because we really don't have much money right now. So this this quick cash injection would allow us to build some, some buildings to actually start getting some tax out of. I'm going to spend normally more than I would on this uh, on, on this particular one. We won't bring the priests along because I'm not sure we've got enough traits to, to not fail this event chain. We have a new heir. Um, who is that? That's our... S oh, our, right. Our previous character's... Oh, my God. Our previous character had a daughter. Our half-sister, who is a drooling imbecile. Minus eight to everything. Can we just chuck you in the... Can we chuck you in the river? Oh, she's not even at our court. Yeah, she's miles away. Uh, she must be with her mother. Yeah, okay. Good. Not, uh, not our problem then. Not our concern in the least. Your expedition has finally reached the realm of Chief Dashkull. Your steward asks you what we should... Uh, okay, let's give him a dozen tough warriors. One of these guys. Riemann's Bluff. Found themselves right smack bang in the middle of Valenwood. Okay, cool. Dozen tough warriors. Again, I'm going to spend more than I normally would on this because I know that we haven't got the traits to allow us to succeed in it. So we're going to have to be very, very careful. This is going to be just rolling the dice, essentially, on whether or not we succeed. Please excuse him. I'm trying to teach this barbarian proper manners. That's it. Fuck. Okay, so not only are we now 40 gold down, but we didn't even get the gold out of it in the first place. We did get plus one stewardship, so it could have been worse. No, it could have been worse. That was literally the worst outcome. Shit. A group of head hedge knights. That's kind of cool. Uh, Game the trade Gregarious guaranteed, but it is another three gold disappearing. Good lord. I mean, I've got to take it. If we had Gregarious, ironically enough, in that last time, we could have potentially passed it a lot easier. Uh, farewell feast. Sure. A young woman has been seduced by one of the hedge knights that seem to have unforeseen consequences. Let them both stay at court. Um, or we can chuck him in the dungeon. Sure. I mean, let them both stay. Who really cares that much, I guess? Or we can throw the hedge knights. Okay, we probably shouldn't have let these guys in at all, huh? Ignore the complaint. You know what? Leave them. We're not, we're not risking any of our gold. Speaking of which, we are now harboring the homeless, so our levy size is down by another 10%. How has this gone so badly, so quickly? Oh, wow. Emperor Varen of the Cyrodiilic Empire has vetoed the proceedings of the Elder Council in the middle of its debate concerning inducting Magnathana to the Elder Council, preventing a nomination from being confirmed. Has the Emperor overstepped his bounds? Now, is she the one that brings about Molag Bell? I can never remember. Okay. Well, this is very strange. Or is it like his wife or something? Oh, it's probably his wife, isn't it? Yeah. You know what? That seems a lot more reasonable now I think about it. Yeah, it's, it's his wife and our Elijah's son. Uh, daughter, obviously. Daughter. She's a, she's a woman, at least as far as I know. So that's, um, oh my god, seriously. Goblins as well. I'll deal with this directly, because we're part of the Fighters Guild, right? We can actually try and get rid of it. Um, let's do it. It's time I put a stop to this goblin infestation. I'll round up my belongings and head to the back, head into the back country to rid Vartachin of these foul creatures. Good. Please don't die. Uh, we're going to be probably wounded, let's be honest. No, my luck, we're going to get wounded here. Fine. We nailed it, and we got two gold back. Incredible. A hundred reputation, too. Thank you. Oh, thank God. Oh, we can debase the mints. I appreciate that. Okay, cool. We got greedy as well. Is that still a tax modifier in this one? It is. Thank God for that. You know what? I'll take that. All right. Um, right. Let's upgrade our capital if we can at all. If we've got anything that gives us any sort of tax. Nothing. Shit. 
Um, maybe we should just save up for a city in that case because we can hold it and we are kind of desperate for gold. Baron Horik, we're trying to have a child so I can steal your bloodline and now he's just shitting everywhere. Cholera? Well, that's not... Oh, for the love of God. Plus 0 0.25, plus 1 health. Okay, I think chances are he's dead. Johnny my monk gives no health either. Ah, oh, for the love of God. Called my court physician. Good luck. Oh, we actually did a good job. Mild illness. Successful experimental treatment. Ah, oh, sweet. Okay, thank you. Praise him to the court. Live, Horik. Live. We need that bloodline. Maybe I'm spending more time on interesting subjects where I found my calling, but my focus has improved dramatically as we lose absent-minded. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even realize we had absent-minded. I'll be completely frank with you. Um, we do have arbitrary and... Oh, we're chased. Friggin' chased. Maybe it would be better to flip over to seduction rather than business. In fact, I probably should have done family focus or seduction to start off with here, seeing as we are on the verge of getting a game over by which I mean playing as an imbecile, which might as well just be a bloody game over at this stage. Um, yeah, the second we can, when is that? Another three years. Oh, for the love of God. Then we'll flip over and just try and get a kid as soon as possible. I mean, we've also got to wait for the husband to stop shitting just absolutely everywhere. Since I came to Skinnier, we have never had a shortage of soldiers. Much better marshal than a father. Leading in a father's footsteps of being just a fantastic marshal for our liege. And we can also become an aspiring falcon. And now that gives, what is that, diplomacy and marshal or something along those lines? I never remember what it actually gives, but I'll take that one. Lose 200 prestige. Uh, honestly, I'm fine. I, I mean, prestige isn't going to drive our realm into sort of homeless and goblin, in goblin infestations. And Babby is formed. She is indeed Pragananance. This is fantastic. All right. Pray for the child's good health. Um, rest and avoid any hard tasks. Or relax and give another plus 10 general opinion. Fuck it. I'll take that. And did we... Oh, we haven't even worshipped Bella on this one, have we? Um, why can't we pick a patron saint? Oh, because she's already followed Zenithar. Zenithar? You big idiot. I am a falconer. What does that give? That gives just diplomacy. Okay, you know what? That's fine. I'll take diplomacy. One of the smiths working for the fighters guild has asked my help in producing shields. Absolutely. Are we going to get some gold out of this? We better. Um, we gain 100 reputation. I swear the mages guild was a lot less rep than, than the fighters guild. You, I, I swear you only used to get like one gold and 10 reputation or whatever for doing a class on launching fireballs around. Oh, to be fair though, I'm not saying that. There are, yeah, I was going to say there are just as many ranks in the mages guild. Okay, there's one, one more in the fighters guild, but... Okay, it will take a long time to level up through all of these, though. And they don't start giving anything good until we get up to... Uh, until we get up to Guardian. Feudal build cost modifier. So is that just castles? I, I would assume so. And then Master gives us minus 20% build cost. That's pretty decent. That's actually really, really good. Okay, we are in the final months of the pregnancy. Come on, give us that kid. Ah, oh, August. Diggus. D Dickus Biggus Julius. How are you doing? D has got the bloodline of the companions. Is sickly, unfortunately. Born under the apprentice. That's okay. Stewardship and learning isn't bad. And Nibidane, of course, as well there. Okay. He is about to die because he is sickly, which is kind of garbage, I will admit. What What are we? We're a oh, man. Are we actually training Marshall, though? We are. We're an experienced warrior. Um, Man, that gives plus 45 personal combat as well. That's pretty incredible. Uh, Kid, you'll be trained in thrift because I think right now, although... If we do get that coastline, going out raiding with... Yeah, you know what? Let's go Let's go, Marshall. He's also got the blood of the companions. What sort of coward am I not training him in Marshall? Right, okay. Um, oh, she's fantastic. Rhea, where did you come from? Train my son. You are you are goddamn incredible. Legendary warrior. Welcome aboard. August. August biggest... How about just Augustus biggest dickus? Sorry. Dickus biggest Julius. Excellent. That not only does that sound imperial, but it also fits so well just into that dynasty. Okay, successful treatment. Not too bad. He's still not quite out in the clear yet, but at least we're not going to get game over. Ah, and because our husband has the same education as us, we're going we're gonna to bond over our work. There we go. Nice. Plus 20 opinion with him. Um, they like each other a lot. Like, a huge amount. Oh, that's a good husband. Nice choice. All right. We are going to go for military organization. We are still fabricating our claims. That's going to take a very long time before we get anything good out of that. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys like a little less of uh, still an ambitious playthrough. We do still want to become the emperor of of the Cyrodiilic Empire. We're going to work our way through Intrigue this time, rather than just blasting everyone with a magic spell and becoming God. Because I think that one might be a little bit overdone. I will admit that myself. I think I think maybe we've, we've done that one too many times at this stage. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made this series possible in the first place. I'm looking forward to your Imperial names. If you want to start chucking me those over in Discord, I'll start building up a list. And then by the time we actually get into the position where we can give out some vassals, we'll already have some ready. So thank you to... Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Fungus King, Gogola, Sarik, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kaden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Palvis Presley, Skaz, Sethal the Swede, Stannis the Manis, The Forsaken One, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, and Vacuous Bacchus. 
Thank you for your support, the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making this series and the other series possible in the first place. Again, you get like three CK2 videos a day now. It's pretty nuts. Second channel as well, as it says on the screen right now, you've got Twitch VODs where we are playing a Ring Ring playthrough. Um, it's very ridiculous. So I'd recommend checking that one out if you're into the more. If you're into the god characters, check out Ring Ring, the one true god. And a thank you as well to Asro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid44, Ben Troke, Betterman's Max, Better Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Cody 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Ron, Genji Turka, Gray, Haji Demar, Hancock, Icy the Great, Irish, Israel, Jay Lehrer, James Barnes, Jason, Jose, Euron DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Liz Me, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Simon, Pant Pearl, Peyton Dennisar, Rush Nolligart, Billionaire, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach Pella, and Zico 2. Leave me your hints for how the hell I'm supposed to play to all in this. There's probably some crazy exploits. Okay, don't tell me crazy exploits, but you know, just, just a nudge in the right direction would be useful.